Hey, so last time we looked at um, how you would convert a decimal number to binary that had a fractional part. Now, any number that has a decimal point in it is referred to as a floating point number. And unfortunately for us, once we've got a number, let's say 101.011, we can't store that in the computer as is because we can't store a decimal point. If we were, we'd have to store it as a 1 or a 0, and that would get misrepresented as just a really big number. So I'm going to show you now how you would store a floating point number in the computer. So when we store floating point numbers in the computer, we break it down into a different structure. We break it down into m times b to the e, and then from that we form a word uh, in binary that would be the representation in the computer. So first of all, I'll explain what these letters are. The M stands for mantissa. And this is the significant in a common logarithm or floating point number. That's according to Wikipedia. And then we've also got the B, which is the base. And so if we're dealing in binary, that will simply be 2. Now the E is the exponent. And that will make a little bit more sense as we go into this following explanation. Let's have a little reminder for ourselves what our formula is, which is M times B to the E. Now let's say we start with the number 7. And at the moment, that is our m. And we need to have that times b to the e. Now what we need to do is we need to have that, we're going to convert into binary, so we'll put our base as 2. And 2 to what power can we times 7 by to have the answer still equal to 7? Now 2 to the 0, if we look at our binary scale, is equal to 1. So 7 times 1 is still equal to 7. Okay, so this is helping us understand our structure. Now what we need to do first is we actually need to convert that 7 to binary. And we also have to remember that this here is our base formula. Okay, so let's convert our 7 to binary. And it is 1, 1, 1. And we're still times 2 to the 0. Now with our floating point, we have to normalize our mantissa, and that means that there cannot be any significant digits on the left of the decimal point. So 111 could be viewed as 111.0. Now we have to move our decimal point three spots to the left to get rid of any significant digits on the left of the decimal point. So by moving our decimal point, we need to record that somewhere, and we do that in our exponent. So instead of it being 2 to the 0, we've moved it 3 to the left, and so we increase our powers by 3. Sorry, that doesn't look much like a 3. If we had moved our decimal point to the right, we would have subtracted from our powers. So left is plus, and right is minus. So I've just moved that up the screen a bit because I was running out of space. Um, the other thing we need to look at is our exponent and we need to represent that in binary as well and so what we end up with is it's a positive 3 so we need to have a 0 to represent that it is a 3 and we know that 3 is 1 1 so 0 1 1 what we then need to do is we need to convert this into a word, so a string of bits that can be stored in the computer. So for example, we might use an 8-bit word. So we would use one bit to represent the sign of the mantissa. Now that is a positive number, so I would represent that with a 0. Then I need to represent my exponent in 2's complement. 
and a positive number in two's complement looks just like the normal positive number. So let's say we're doing an 8-bit word, we'll have one bit for the sign, three bits for the exponent, and four bits for the mantissa, for the normalized mantissa. So we put our 0, 1, 1 here. And then we need our normalized mantissa, and you can, in your head, think of the decimal point being there, and you fill to the right of that. Now if I need four bits, then I add padding of zeros. So let's have a look at those parts again. We've got the sine of the mantissa. We've got the exponent as a twos complement. And then we have the normalized mantissa. And now you might ask as well, like why do we have the sign of the mantissa and don't just put it in as two's complement? And the problem there would be that because we have to normalize it so we get rid of any zeros after the decimal point, this number would always look like a negative. So that defeats the purpose. We can't represent positive numbers that way. So we separate the sign out as a sign bit. Now with the exponent, uh, we can actually represent that as a negative or a positive in two's complement because we don't normalize that one in any way. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. We'll go through um, two more examples and we'll go through breaking it down from the original number down to a word. And then in another tutorial probably we'll go the other way around. So starting from a word and going through to the decimal number. So let's start off with 3.25. Now we have to put in that formula of m times b to the e. Now our base is going to be 2. And as we said before, if you are starting with a base number, you need to get that to equal 1. So we start at 2 to the power of 0. So let's convert our decimal to binary. So 3 is 0, 1, 1, point, and then 0.25 is 0 0.01 times 2 to the 0. So first step, convert to binary. Our second step is then to normalize our mantissa. So you need to get rid of any significant digits on the left of the decimal point by moving your decimal point. Okay, so we move it two spots to the left. So we end up with 0 0.1101 times 2, and we moved it 2 to the left. Left is adding, so 2 to the power of 2. So the second step is normalize. Then we need to look at converting our um, exponent. So we've got 0 0.1101 times 2. It's a positive 2, and a positive 2 is 0, 1, 0. So step 3 was convert exponent. So I'm just going to put exp. And by now we have all the information we need to put this into a word. So I'm going to use the same structure before. I'm going to use an 8-bit word. One bit for the sign of the mantissa. This mantissa, it's a positive number, so zero. Then I need the exponent in two's complement, which we've already looked at there. It's positive and it's zero, one, zero. Then we need the normalized mantissa, one, one, zero, one. And that is our conversion of 3.25. So let's have a look at another example. Okay, so the next example we're going to do is we're going to try out something a little bit different. And we're going to start with negative 0 0.0125. And if that's the number that we started with, then we would have a base of 2 and an exponent of 0. So remember that the first step we take is we convert that mantissa to binary. So it is minus 0 0.001. And our the rest of it stays the same. As we said, the second step was about normalizing the mantissa. 
And in this scenario, um, we don't have any significant digits to the left of the decimal point, but we have a bunch of zeros to the right. And we want to get rid of those as well. So this time we're moving our decimal point the other direction. So we're going to to the right. So we end up with minus 0.1. Now this means that our exponent has changed, but instead of adding to the powers, we are subtracting 2. Okay, so when we move to the right, we subtract the number of times that our decimal point moved. And when we move to the left, we add on the number of times that it moved. Okay, so we've got minus 0.1 times 2. And now we need to put our 2's, we need to convert our exponent to binary. And we need it to be a 2's complement in, in binary. So a positive 2 would be 0, 1, 0. Now if we convert that, we keep it the same until the first one. Keep the first one and change everything after that. So using three bits of information, a negative two would be one, one, zero. By now we've got everything that we need to fit that into a word, an eight bit word. So let's have a look. First of all, we need the sign of our mantissa. Now a negative is represented by a one. Then we need to have our twos complement exponent, just one, one, zero. And then we need our mantissa, which is just a 1. But we need 4 bits of information there, so we fill to the right with zeros. Okay, so hopefully that process makes a little bit of sense, and that helps you understand how the computer stores floating point numbers.